Well, hi, everybody, and welcome. My name is Zane Lowe, and I'm thrilled to be here. We're gathered here in a Chinese restaurant right here in Chinatown, in Soho, in London, in the UK. And the reason we're here is we have a very special event that's going to unfold over the course of the next half an hour, 45 minutes. Uh, we are streaming live online around the world right now, and we're also in a room with members of the Assembled World's Press. Um, now, the reason we're here, it will all unfold over the course of this event as to why it's in a Chinese restaurant and why it's happening on this Chinese New Year. But the reason that we're here and you're online and we're all sitting in this room is because today's guests are one of the world's most beloved bands. They've given us so many incredible musical moments, albums, songs, live performances, events in our lives. And they haven't made any new music or done anything of that nature for some time. 16 years since their last album as a four-piece in spirit, 12 years since their last album in name as a three-piece. And today they join us with news. So please, put your hands together and be very happy to welcome back Blur. What's going on? Hey, Sit down, guys. Hello. Hello. It's good to be Hi. out. Best kept secret in pop. Worst kept secret this morning. Best kept secret in pop. Um, welcome back. Good to see you guys. Thank you so much for coming through. And it's so good that you've got good news. Big news. Lots to, lots to talk about. Well, questions to take. Good news. We've got news. It's good news. <laughs> um, we're going to take questions from uh, people on Facebook, online. We're also going to take questions from the press. Damon's going to get himself sorted. Well, my child's keep forward. Settle down. Oh, my child's <laughs> uh, first things first. The rumors are true. We are opening a Chinese restaurant <laughs> here in Chinatown. I'm retiring. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, same as usual. <laughs> and what are you doing? I'm waking Nothing. up. Really? You're waking up. Yeah. Well, that's really? Fucking interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Never shook the rock star life. Um, <laughs> Let's get straight down to the first bit of good news, because of all the questions that keep coming in uh, from people online right now, uh, one of the most common ones is, uh, you know, are people going to get a chance to see you guys perform live? Yeah. And um, we can ask that question right now. Yes. Uh, well, we, yeah, we're going to play. We're going to play. Uh, we're going to play Hyde Park. Mm -hmm. One more uh, time. One more. <laughs> one more time. Fourth time. It, yeah. But, so the, but the reason why we're going to play. Yeah, we'll get, do you want to give that away now? Do you want to get to that? Well, I wouldn't be doing this if it was just because we were doing a gig. Well, I know, I know. So let's talk a little bit about Hyde Park because be let's just string you. people along just a little bit well, longer. Well, okay, you we'll can string people along as long as you like. <laughs> get on with it then. Well, we've made a new record. Yeah! Yeah, we've yeah. made a new record. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. It's great too. It's exciting news, man. We're all really happy that you got in and, and, and finished a brand new album. Uh, we do need to talk about Hyde Park a little bit because it's happening on June 20th and obviously there's tickets to sell. Well, you know, I mean... Not until February the 27th. Pe people there you go. Who, Someone's on message. <laughs> people who come to see us in the past know, know what, what we're like live, but on this occasion we also have new a, whole, a whole new yeah. s set of things to kind of, you know, get excited about. So yeah. there'll be even more music. These are the facts that we already know. That you got into a recording studio or some kind of recording facility in Hong Kong for five days, right, Graham? We, in 2013? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's right, yep. We yeah. had some, um, what did you say, downtime. Right. Um, we had a cancellation when we were out in Hong Kong. There was a cancellation elsewhere, in Japan actually. And um, so we thought we'd put a few days, five or six days, to good use. And uh, we located a studio mm. and um, took all our stuff there and decided to just um, ha have a play, really. Well, we didn't really have much stuff. Didn't I mean, we have much thing. stuff? No, we didn't have much stuff at all. I mean, it was really, it was back to sort of what felt like the way we, we recorded when we first started mm -hmm. doing stuff mm -hmm. together, especially um, a studio in Ma called Matrix, which isn't too far away from here, where we used to do all our B-sides. It, it was that sort of, it wasn't a flash studio. It was pretty, it was pretty claustrophobic. It was really hot. It was June, it was like... And it was spontaneous. I mean, you didn't have that in the diary, right? It was like, well, not at all. Not at all. This. And we just went in there and, and knocked about loads of ideas. And uh, we didn't get anything finished. Uh, and um, I don't know, we all sort of, you know, after that we went to Jakarta 
we did a gig and then we didn't see each other for months and then we did a few more gigs in um, South America but during that during that time I think the whole sort of thing had dissipated into into what I, I thought there was that it hadn't happened you know it was fun it was a nice way to pass a few days but but not <laughs> but, but, but nothing really sort of concrete had come out of it that's why so. this is such a lovely surprise because we knew that you had recorded some, some music of some description because you've been open about it. Someone had said, you know, yeah, we've been laying down some ideas. Not on well, I did. I went, we, we, when we went on stage, I said, hey, we've recorded a new record. Because <laughs> I was just really excited about it, but we hadn't. Right. The point is, we hadn't. Yeah. And then, of course, it was like nothing, nothing sort of followed. And, uh, and you know, we didn't have any idea that you were even going to return to the stage or what the future held for the band. So, in fact, you're sitting here now with an album. I want to trace their journey. First, I want to talk about the importance of Hong Kong because we're here in a Chinese restaurant. Yeah. And, you know, I think the album artwork, if, if, if it hasn't been flashed up on the screen yet, um, it's already been in a paper here this morning. Um, you know, that place obviously made a, a very large impression yeah, on it's in simplified, in, it's in simplified Chinese characters. Mm. It, uh, uh, no, not that one. <laughs> That's, that's, that's the Hyde Park, Park that's poster. That's the one. There you go. There you go. Right on the left it says blur, mm -hmm. and on the right it says the magic whip. Which is I just love this morning that when that, when that leaked, they were like, bit of ice cream. I love that they, this morning <laughs> they were like, we've had it to... And then there's a little cloud down the bottom. <laughs> the who did cloud. the artwork, actually? Who, did, who yeah. designed it? Uh, a guy called Tony Hung. Right. He's fantastic. I just love that. Is he here? Where is he? He's around. Great job. It's amazing. Is he Brilliant job. Thank you very much. Yeah, we'd all like one, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's real. Yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's a photograph, right? Yeah. It's, it's a photograph, a photograph of, real, of the real, yeah. of the real thing. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, you're blowing my mind. Yeah, it's real. <laughs> yeah. You can do that. What? Yeah. Um, so Hong Kong, yeah, made a real impression on you because thematically on the record, um, it, it, does, it does feature. And that, in those five days... Well, yeah, that was, that was... Well, let's just trace how, how, what do. happened after that. Mm -hmm. Nothing happened after that at all. And I, when I was, people were asking me questions, like, is there, do you think anything's going to happen? No, I really don't think anything's going to happen. I was sort of doing, doing my um, everyday robot stuff. Mm. Uh, was that news to you guys, when Damon would say that, or did you have to do a, a conversation? That well, the you thing know? is, you, we, all, we, all say things on, uh, any, we all say things different depending on what day yeah, it and is, and depending on what hat we're wearing, depending who we are, what time of day. So, you know, to have someone say... It's, it's very like, old school, yeah, Matt. No one says anything anymore. You guys, <laughs> you guys are like, ah, oh, there's no album. We haven't, oh, there's an album! We haven't really worked out how the whole system works. <laughs> Still. So we're always... But, but we've all gone I, back I, to our own lives and existences and, and, and things like that. Yeah. And, and, I, and I suppose um, what, what we did, we, we went into the studio and we kind of made sound and we enjoyed ourselves. And, and, I, and I guess that there was the thing that that was going to sit there, and the question was, was it going to sit there forever, who or do, who, was something going to happen? Who went back and listened to them? Who? Right. It's his fault. This whole thing is his fault. Graham Coxon, and ladies and gentlemen. And Steve, Steve. And Steve, Steve. 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 And Steve. 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 Between them, it's there. All right, Hello, go on Steve. then. Hello, Steven. Steven Street, Steve. Steve Street, ladies and gentlemen. Steven Street, ladies and gentlemen. So. I was sitting, you know, sitting on the sofa, and mm. other people are making music, and they get on the radio, and it's like, ah, oh, you know, I hate sitting there, and I'm not doing much, and other people are making music, and they're getting told that they're great. So uh, <laughs> Damon was off doing stuff and that, and being told he was great. And I was like, well, what about this stuff? It felt really good, you know, in the studio. It just felt positive. We had fun. We were all together in the same room, in this hot little room. And it was casual, and it was just something we did off our own backs. And I thought... It would be great to go back now it's fermented a while, you know, and um, have a look. So I, I, I sort of... Well, then I had to think, well, you know, I, I really think we need somebody who is meticulous and very patient, a chap we know very well, <laughs> to perhaps... Um, to um, Always well presented. Aging well, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> really, though, to, seriously. You know, to go over it a bit, because it was quite an overwhelming prospect. Mm -hmm. There was sort of... You know, for want of a better word, jamming. You know, there was some sonic la landscaping being being created. That was quite a lot. It was quite a lot of stuff to go for. Any songs that kind of ended up on the record? Well, Anything well, that kind of took yeah, shape? All the ideas ended up on the record. All the ideas. So we we, I thought and I said, I said, Damon, can I have a little chat? 
Is that your job as well? I mean, nice. Well, I'll have a drink then. Sorry, look, I was in autopilot then, and now I've tripped over myself. <laughs> I, just so I just thought, well, you know, I thought, well, tell you what, this is a good idea, and if there's anything there, I think it'll be worth looking at. So I said to Damon, I said, do you mind if I have a look at all this, all this um, music and yeah. see if there's anything there pursuing? If there isn't, fair enough. If there is... How quickly did right. it take you to work out that you had something that could be that, that could turn into an album, that could be a, a body of work? You know? Well, the thing is, I mean, I liken it to somebody's notes, sort of scrawling all over a big book and pages falling out. And, and, I, and I just thought, we need someone to organise it. So we uh, slung it over to Stephen. And um, he, he, he kind of looked through it and got bits together and organised it. And then um, I joined oh, no, him. Sorry, it's your, and, it's your um, Definitely. Could somebody share my microphone? <laughs> yeah, we could do it like Stephen Tyler and Joe we'll Perry. We could be like Stephen Street. Give me the microphone, Stephen. Well, you can say how you thought it. Yeah, because I am interested about this because yeah. it's one thing to go on for five lying, days, you know? and then lying. but what I heard, I mean, can I say I heard the record? Okay, so I had to have heard the record because I wanted to hear it before I talked to you about it. Um, for a start, it's amazing. You're all going to love it. It's a really, absolutely brilliant Blur album, and. Uh, and I, I'm amazed that from five days you were, you were able to, 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 to kind of pick up that thread and, and start to build something from it because it feels like, it, you know, probably there were, there were a lot of good time. ideas put yeah. down. Mm. I mean, in, in the, in, back in the past, the boys used to go off and do demos of every song that we ever recorded, and then they'll be given the kind of the green light by the label saying, you can do that song, that song, and that song. Mm. This time around, it was a case of the guys, they were putting down, they were just being really free and putting down their ideas mm, mm. you know uh, freely in the studio and this was, which is what you what you did isn't it i mean you just went, you went in there and just played and it was great and then i basically said look i was obviously first of all delighted to get involved mm. but this time instead of like having to do re-record the songs all over again it was actually just recording these ideas that they freely had put down mm, and mm. just developing those and uh, what was the first song that really took shape that really can you remember that <coughs> Um, I, I can't remember anything really well, about I mean, the, the session, mm. the session process because it was so, so was quick. intense yeah. and quick. Yeah. Can you all hear? But by, by the time we, Stephen and I got, I mean, there, there were some ones that were a little more obvious to tackle first, mm. and then there were others that seemed more, more sort of, sort of dense, you know. Because I think on the record there are some, go on, but you know, things that are kind of obviously blur, but then there are things that may not sort of really sound like the classically what people think. Yeah. Were well, you all present <laughs> when you started to um, were you all present when you started to, to, to do phase two of this of this record? No, no. they did their they 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 Graham came to me, mm. said, I think we've got something here and I went, Brilliant, go and have a look at it. I mean, you know, I was really busy mm. doing what I was doing. Uh, and so yeah. Stephen and Graham went went off and then they came back, <laughs> played it to me what they'd done and it was like oh no this is really good <laughs> <laughs> I mean it was a lot to go through it was, like 15 it was just like very mixed years. emotions for me yeah, because yeah. I kind of felt I really felt at the end of the last gigs we did that that was it that was the end that was the end not not, not for any sort of heavy reason it's just it had run its course and there was there's no way we could do another gig without another a new record yes. I think and the longer we sort of left it, the more of a mountain to, to climb it became, it be, yeah. became in, in a way. And the, yeah. the, the period in Hong Kong, well, it, it just everything sort of fell right because we got back together to do these shows in places we'd, we'd never been before. Mm. And I don't think we were really thinking about making a record. There was suddenly just this opportunity to mm. get in a studio together. And rather than like, sort of trying to make like a big comeback single and all but feeling loads of pressure, we'd been playing together loads because we, we were on so the we road. Actually, we, just, we actually and sounded we, like a band at that point. Mm, so mm. it was really accidental. There was, there has not been, an, in, a, in a sense, there's not been an effort this record at all. It's been completely natural and spontaneous. So anyway, you came, you finished, you, well, you... That was what I was trying to say about the demo thing. It was that you could tell by listening to the recordings mm. that there was, there was no pressure on them. They were just putting down ideas, and it, but it was really good because, as Damon said, they were, they were in the middle of touring, so they were playing well. I was and just singing, really, yeah. lyrically, what was coming into my head. But, and because I was mm. in Hong Kong, it, I was just thinking about what happened on the 
on the journey to the studio, I don't know what happened last night mm -hmm. or, what, or what was happening, you know, just everything was related to being on that, in, in that quite claustrophobic island mm -hmm. with millions and millions and millions and millions of other people. Which carried over into the, into the you know, finished lyrics of the record in some respect well. well. see, the, so then, I, then they, they played it to me and I think I had to go back to Australia to finish off my tour. So I, went, I, I was in Australia and then I knew that we, we were sort of, at that point, everyone had gone, okay, there is a record here, but, and I was going, well, there is a record here, but I haven't, no I haven't done any lyrics for the whole record. There's bits, I can hear loads of stuff, but it doesn't make much sense at the moment, I, you know. Uh, so I sort of thought, well, I better go back to Hong Kong. So on the way back from uh, Australia, which was really, it was Christmas time by, by yeah. now, and I really, yeah. want, uh, I wanted to get home. I didn't really want to go somewhere else, but I did. I did. Uh, I'm really glad I did. But I'm really glad I did. I did do some work on this record. I bloody <laughs> fucking did. But it, the, the, point, the point is, I'm really glad I did because it, it, gave, it, it gave me a really interesting sort of set of things to write about because I was rem remembering the time we were there, yeah. th the moment I was there, which was literally the sort of 24 hours after they'd, com they, they'd scrubbed all the streets clean of... Of of the uh, the protests, you know, that it had just mm -hmm. disappeared. Just it was literally, you wouldn't know, and anything had ever happened. Yeah. But I, that was very fresh in my mind from watching it on television and thinking about it. And it's also previous experiences that I that I'd had in Hong Kong when I was with Gorillaz and and when I went there to do Monkey. I've had quite a lot. I spent quite a lot of time in, in Hong Kong in China. So I've got quite a lot. Of, I've got quite a, yeah. a strong emotional connection to, to China. I just imagine um, you being in Hong Kong with this, with this music <coughs> in your ears that only you have and the chance for you to really add the, you know, a, 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 a very important element to this in a place where you are. And it also gave me an opportunity Amazing. to write about uh, my visit to North Korea, which I'd done pre the year previous, which I'd written loads of stuff, but I had no anywhere. And it what? sort of, it felt like it was, it felt, it was a song called Pyongyang. Which sort of, you know, devils in the state. That's the track that's going to go Yeah. I didn't know that. I think that's North Korea. Um, but Did you guys know that? Am I way behind the airport? Well, anyway, oh, yeah. anyway, I went to <laughs> There's a song about it. Okay. <laughs> but no, it felt like it was it felt like it was near enough to Hong Kong for mm. you know, to sort of keep in. But no, so that's what I did. I just sort of made sure everything was about that. And it was about us and us in us there and how we felt when we were there and our relationship with each other. So it's it, it proved to be an interesting subject matter. I, I found it an interesting thing to do. Yeah. And then uh, I had to sing it. And I was really, <laughs> really nervous because I haven't sung anything with Stephen since Beetlebum. Yeah. It's yeah. the last I mean, thing eight, I sang. Over, over 18 years since the last time uh, <laughs> they la and I last worked time. together. Wow. So we were both, I was nervous too. Yeah. I mean, you know, because I, mean, I worked with it on, with Grey, first of all. We kind of really just. We just went in there like a couple of kids. And you guys have worked together since, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Mind so it wasn't and... such a big step for me working mm. with Graham because obviously we've done quite a few. We fell out terribly and we hadn't talked for each other. Come on. But no, we, we so we were like kids in the sweet shop, just like, oh, try this, try this, let's try that, and we're trying to put some shape into these recordings yeah. that the guys have done. Yeah. And then, um, and then we were both very nervous, taking it back to Damon to play to him to say, look, this is what we've done. Do you like it? You know, I was really nervous. I was doing it. Anything new that I was bringing to the recordings and. I mean, it was a bit about sort of um, structuring what we had, getting dynamics in there, so et cetera, et cetera, but, but, but also not overwhelming it, leaving a lot of space, and also trying, hoping that it would be inspiring to then yeah. give to Damon. Yeah, we did. I mean, it was I'm, just, I'm so bloody delighted it happened, because, it, it, I mean, it's so, it just, it, it's, <coughs> I've longed for it. Because the coffee F chop was pretty difficult. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, we've got some very important questions to, uh, to put to you guys from, from Facebook and also from the floor. We're going to go to the floor for press too. Um, but the first one is, um, the first question here is, I think it's a very important question from uh, D. Svizada. Uh, do you cook? I know you do. <laughs> I love cooking. Yeah, any good? Yeah. Specialty? Um, well, I've, I'm really into uh, Persian cooking at the moment. Oh. That's, that's what I'm, I'm stuck you're, on at the moment. You're a student of the kitchen. I, I love cooking. Dave? I eat, really. That's my, <laughs> that's my main speciality. Uh, Graham? Mm, well, when I do, I cook. <laughs> <laughs> and Alex, what are you working on right now, apart from yourself? Uh, <laughs> I do it's my first job cooking. My granddad was a chef. Right. I, I check out my 
series recipes that rock. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Stephen, he's a cook. He, he, he's an yeah, ex food critic. So <laughs> um, do we have any questions from the floor? Who's our we first question from the press? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Matt? Uh, Hi, hello, Matt Everett, <laughs> Six Music right. Radio 2. Uh, first of all, congratulations on keeping it quiet. That never happens. Hello, Matt. I always... had no idea we were going to keep it quiet beyond Christmas. I was saying, it's yeah, a it's stupid good. idea, it's going to leak. And Actually, it did no. leak this morning, but I mean... I had no yeah, idea. Yeah, we, 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 we leaked it. Did we leak it? Yeah, you asked him that. That was so cool. Really? Yeah, I, so. I, I mean, hats <laughs> off to everyone that knew and didn't blab. Yeah. It's just more, it's just, it's just, a, just a little bit more exciting if you are able to keep something quiet, mm. not open your gob. It has it. meant planning what to do next is rather difficult because we Although, can't say. Honestly, when, when, in the past when I've been told, asked, is there a record? And I've said no. I genuinely thought, no one's asked me since. I knew the last there was time a record. Yeah, right. That was the weird thing. <laughs> Absolutely, that was the same for me. And normally, at the end of every interview, the last question is, so when's the next Blair album? Suddenly, in November of last year, that stopped. Nobody asked. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, because they're not interested anymore. <laughs> well, at least give me the opportunity to flannel and backpedal. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I can't explain it. Uh, yeah, actually, question was, so with your albums in the past, there's, you've talked about the lyrics being influenced by the Far East here, and in the past, whether it's Reykjavik for 13 or Morocco on Think Tank, the sounds of the records have sounded a bit like the cities they've been influenced by, even Parklife in London. As in terms of you playing, does it sound like a record that's been recorded in the Far East? Yeah, yes, absolutely. In what way? I don't know. Well, you're gonna <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But it does. You're, you're going to hear some of it fairly shortly, I think. Yeah, yeah it right. does. It does. There's something, it about it. There's, some, there's something about it. There's something about it. One track. The, the, the studio, the studio the, that we recorded it in, uh, or the majority that we record, the, the, studio, the, the, the sort of the power supply, the, some of the, the, the instruments, the sound of the desk, everything is, is really different. I mean, I've recorded in a lot of places around the world now, and, and every place has a, has a different spirit to it. And, you know, it, it was really interesting to sort of make that decision that it was going to be about Hong Kong, um, but I mean, there's there's points in it, points in the record where I think it really sounds. I don't know if you agree with me, but I think you do. It sounds like a bit like sort of the stuff that David Bowie did in in Berlin. It's got that. I don't know. It's something about it's transposed to other cities. Place, Recording it? in other big cities sometimes is, you know, it's not. It's, it's, there's nothing pastoral about it. It's it's, it's very much an urban record. Here's a question here from uh, Julian Cordonieu. Uh, what's your most memorable concert you've played? Alex, do you have one that really sticks out? <laughs> we, we, were, we were next to the borderline this morning. I remember that one. Um, uh, um, Glastonbury 2009 was pretty, that was pretty special. Um, mm -hmm. Do you think? Yeah, that, that, that's, that was, I don't, it'd be very difficult to... Uh, um, but I just, you know, I just treat that. everyone like the last, the next one would be a good one, I reckon. <laughs> I think we've been quite lucky in the, in the fact that we, when we do choose to get together, that some sort of, uh, you can interpret it as a sign, or there's some, something very lovely happens, whether it's just the sun setting at the right time, or whether it's, you know, there's something going on, mm. something makes it really worthwhile, even if it's for a split second, and then... Let's take another question from the floor. Hi. Uh, John Earl's at Loaded. Uh, is this Hyde Park the end of Blur, or will you tour the album? Could there even be another Blur album after yes, this one? Yes, it's the end of Blur. <laughs> <laughs> I've given up even trying to answer that question. I mean, I just... Well, you don't know, do you? It doesn't matter. Does it's it not really? something you know, you know. I mean, it's really, know. really nice to have something in our, physically in our hands that we're pr really proud of, that we can go out and play and, and do... Uh, some of our old tunes as well, and just mix it all together. I mean, just like, you that's, know. that's exciting. But as far as any future plans, the first interview I did about this album earlier on in the week, the last question was, "What about the next Blur album?" <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'm going to dine out on that forever. The album isn't even technically finished, and they're still talking about the next one. It is technically finished. <laughs> is it now? Yeah. Well, I hope there's more shows. I'll technically end finished. Yes. All this time <laughs> okay. waiting to make new music. <laughs> and to get new songs, that surely the reward for you is to be able to play them. So I would, without having any information, I would probably hope that there'll be shows. Because one show would be, you know. No, it's not just going to be Here's a new album, here's one show. There's not just going to be one show. We've got to, we've got to sort of work up work until up that. And I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do. It's answer. very hard to organise anything else anyway, because you can't announce anything. So how are you going to say? 
Tim Botterer wants to know, what are you going to do for the Chinese New Year? You got any special plans? We're going, We're going out for Chinese. We're going out for Sichuan later. <laughs> together. <laughs> It's even longer since we were working together. NME. Hello. No, Q and Mojo. Oh. It's, it's Paul. Hello. Oh, well, but you used to work for NME. I did. <laughs> Things have changed. Things changed. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's like bands splitting up and getting back together again. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, no, technically, we never split. In terms of these lovely, this lovely uh, list of songs, which one are you all most looking forward to playing live together as a band? Uh, most of them are pretty, will be pretty awesome live, I reckon. I mean, the, the song that we're going to put out today, Go Out, mm -hmm. is, yeah. I can't, I'm, <laughs> I, 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 can, I can feel that already happening. Yeah, yeah. Mozart Street's pretty dark, pretty, pretty Yeah, that's, that's, that's uh, it's all be quite challenging because there's lots and lots of layers on this record, as you'll hear when you hear it. So, it's got to kind of sit back and... Mm -hmm. But it's a record we can play live because yeah. we, we, we created it just by playing yeah. together, so yeah. there's no... There's, 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 there's no, it's not, a, it's not a, um, a technically sort of tricky or deceptive record. What you hear is what we played. In this a very old-fashioned sense of the word. This one from Dan Lauer. Um, <laughs> no also tune either. <laughs> On the drums. Yeah, I mean, when, when, when we, I remember the, like when we first started making records, we get to the studio and they say, Beatles made their first record in a fucking day. And we'd spend like a day trying, we try to spend like a, a day but making, making been, the drums they've up. They've been playing yeah. in Hamburg for a year and a half, and that's why they can play like that. And you, it's definitely better to go and record an album when you've been playing a lot, you know, which is a, which is generally what people don't do when mm. they get into the sort of cycle. And this is why it's difficult for bands to carry on making sort of energetic and and uh, m music, and, and 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 generally, bands get to a point where they just sort of they're just sort of in the quagmire of studios and, and, yeah. and their lives and the process of, you know, and, and everything sort of loses that spontaneity. And having given it a I mean, how long is it since, well, so it's what, it's 16 years? 16 years 16 since, since, years since we made it. And that, that, that seemed like a long enough break for us to do something fresh. Yeah. Um, but, but we did do it together for 16 years, like every day for a long time. And it, it's, it, it does sort of all seem to fit back together quite nicely. Um, there's a question here from online uh, from Amanda Carlton. What are your favourite Blur lyrics? If, if that's too difficult to think about an entire catalogue of, of, of individual lines, lyrics or songs. I always but like it. I, 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 like, I like the kind of fictional, factual, fictional-ish narrative, but I like it when Thayman is being a lot more revealing about uh, and expressing something about himself, taking that risk however veiled it might be. But some of them actually in the new record, yeah, I, I think that's what actually, as an interpreter almost, guitar player of, a, of somebody who can be quite veiled lyrically, you know, it's a, it's a kind of a process of, of, to, to me to <laughs> sort of, uh, you know, it's something I have to unravel or find what is personal to me, just like everybody who listens to lyrics. They find what it means to them and then whatever. But then I have to sort of feed it out at the other end, you know what I mean? No. And um, in the form of the guitars, whatever. So, so it's like, but but it's the lyrics and or glimpses of lyrics or snatches of words that were made in Hong Kong and things like that. Mm. And it can be very succinct. You can say a lot, very few words. Do you have a favourite song on the album, Dave? Uh, yeah, I really love Pyongyang. It's really, really beautiful. And uh, I actually, actually listened to the album. When it, when it was uh, all finished and had a good idea of what I thought each song was about. And then I asked Damon to send the lyrics over and read them again and got a completely different idea. So uh, but Pyongyang, I really like. Ong Ong's a banger, no <laughs> doubt. And, uh, Ong Ong, Ong Ong is, has got an extraordinary story <laughs> to it. Because Ong Ong was a idea that I'd I don't know why it was called Ong Ong. I mean, I think it... Shit, I can't even remember this. Steve, <laughs> is Sedgwick here? Because he knows this story. Anyway, there was, I, had a, I had a demo of an idea uh, called Ong Ong. Uh, and it ended up being something that we worked on. And when it came back to, like, well, I've got to write lyrics and, and it's called Ong Ong. And I'm like, well, what's Ong Ong about? So I looked up, I couldn't remember, mm. uh, on the internet what Ong Ong. There was no, 
nothing revealed, and then I suddenly realised they've put an H and a K. It's Hong Kong. Wow. Crazy. <laughs> Honestly, it's about three, four years old. Long that's before you ever, you ever ventured but into it, that That's weird. Don't yeah. you think that's really, really potentially so? Cosmically odd. <laughs> it's, um, it's a Google whack as well. Yeah. Like your search revealed Not zero thing. results. No, but Ong Ong doesn't know. There's some sort of holding, dodgy holding company for, <laughs> for I don't know, Starbucks or something called Ong Ong. But uh, apart from that, no, Ong Ong means absolutely nothing unless. But Unless you put an H and a K in it. And then it's Let's uh, take another <laughs> question from the floor. <laughs> yeah. Hiya. Um, you said there's a track about your visit to North Korea. Could yes. you tell us a bit more about the lyrics to it and um, how you think it'll be received? Mm. Uh, <laughs> I think I'll just give myself enough time to sort of... Take another question from the floor. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, 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 it's an impression, isn't it? You know, it's... it's, it's uh, my impression of the place in, 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 a, in, a, in a very abstract, veiled way. <laughs> so Graham will love it then. <laughs> yeah, Graham will love it. Uh, no, let's take another one from the floor. It's there, you just got you listen, when you listen to it, it's self explanatory what it's about. Okay. Uh, I, don't like talk, I don't like talking about lyrics to songs until you've heard them, you know what I mean? Because otherwise, it doesn't really, it's, it's uh, not contextually correct. Just trail away off that one. What? Just keep trailing yeah, away. Just sort of <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Next question. Hi. Uh, hello there, Bart Sutherland from Rolling Stone. Um, are fans in America going to get a chance to see you play live take, and take these songs over there? Uh, maybe. Maybe. I, th I think it depends on whether anyone's interested or not. You know? I think they're interested. Aren't well, they? if they are, then we'll probably go. Great. <laughs> How do they tell you they're interested? How do they well, there are, there are ways. <laughs> very simple Buying the record is always a good Yeah, start. very simple old-fashioned <laughs> ways. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, let's take another one here as well. Um, what do you guys do in between the recording schedule? So while you, got, while you were making the record, you had your thing going on. Let's focus this on Dave and on Alex. While this album was being made, what was keeping you busy during that time? Uh, um... I did, musically, mm -hmm. like, just like, I mean, as far removed from this as you can get, really. Like learning how to play the bass with a bow and working on me Prokofiev chops. Dave, were you, were you? I'm bizarrely a criminal lawyer, so that takes up <laughs> every spare second of the day forever. Are you, are you your own boss? <laughs> No, no, I work for a big company. So you have to, do you have to apply for time off in order to go and tour this record? They're very understanding with my musical commitments. I'm putting this on hold for a couple of months. Stay on parole. I'm not really seriously affect your life plans, but I've got to go tour an album. There are plenty of people that can carry, that can pick up the reins where I've left off. Don't worry. Hi, Sinead from Radio One here. Hi. So when are we going to hear the album? When's it going to be available? You're going to hear a track now, I think. April 27, if you want me to ask that question for you. Indeed. You're not going to play a track now, because that's embarrassing. <laughs> no. Well, we're not no, saying it. Okay. April 27 is well, the album, is it not? That's, that's the right. album, June April 27. 20th, Hyde Park. Yep, and uh, look at me being your PR guru. Okay. April 27 for the album, June 20 for Hyde Park. And uh, very soon we're going to be listening to a brand new song and but seeing so a lyric video could, from Blur. I think if you, if you, if well, you order the you'll album... You'll be pressing your, your big shiny red button later on, won't you? When, You'll be joining me on the show? Yeah, you will. Yeah. It's not a big shiny red button anymore, but yeah, sure. Uh, it, okay, I think the one with you, you, if you, I think you can, get the, you, can get, you can get Go Out, like, today, I think. Is that correct? Is that, right? <coughs> that You can have that today. Instantly. So, great. Yes. Today. Okay, yes. so that's, I think that's, that's it for questions now. Um, so, without further ado, there were two things we wanted to talk about. It was, uh, say, um, one of them was the instant... Great video or something else as well. Thank you very much for you all for coming. That's what it was. Yeah, thank you. 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 And uh, also, I sincerely, hope, I hope, sincerely hope that all of this, you know, attention is warranted. Wor warranted. Yeah. If you know. So thank, thank you, you ever so much for well. coming. Millions of people Indeed. online who are thank watching. You very thank much. you very much. Thank you people online.